Well, hot on the heels of a thoroughly unsatisfying motor repair, it's probably time to take a look at this battery as well. And actually, I already had a look at it. In fact, this battery is not original anymore. So as you can see here, uh, I've actually broken through the, the official seal. Why they put this on there, I, I really don't know. It's obviously made to be uh, taken apart. Uh, the original battery uh, was a 36 volt, 8 amp hour, uh, 288 watt hour battery. And uh, if you look at pictures on the internet, uh, you will see that this is actually uh, 40 cells, so 4 by 10 cells. There's a fairly easy way of uh, figuring out how many cells there have to be in here because 36 volts. Typical lithium ion batteries are either 3.6, 3.7, or maybe 3.8 volts nominal. So this has to be a 10 series pack. The very best batteries in the world are about 12 or 12 and a half watt hours a piece. So the, if they use the absolute best batteries available right now, uh, this would have to be a 30 cell pack because it has to be a multiple of 10. Uh, but like, obviously, uh, this is a pack from 2012, I believe, 2012, 2013. So uh, back then, cells were uh, much lower capacity, especially cheap cells. So uh, this will have to be pretty much a 40 cell pack, which is awesome because we can put in these new 12 and a half watt hour batteries and get very close to 500 watt hours. Uh, so 40 times 12 and a half, that would be exactly uh, 500 watt hours. Capacity goes a bit down if you discharge it. It's complicated. Basically, I doubled the capacity of this battery. Now, the reason I see this battery pack is obviously made to be taken apart is uh, if you look down the screw holes, you see a torque screw in there. Now, there are uh, four torque screws in total. One, two, three, and four. And then there is uh, this just normal hex nut that um, uh, removes the strap and also keeps the battery together. So uh, if we remove those five points, uh, it's very easy to get in. There are some clips on the bottom side. They also have to flip, uh, but that's pretty minor. I'm kind of sorry that I didn't actually get the uh, battery rebuild on video. It would be kind of nice. Uh, the main reason for it is I didn't feel like bringing my camera to uh, the hacker space where I actually did the um, reselling. But on the other hand, the video will be uh, much shorter because of it. And, you know, I tend to be a bit, uh, bit slow in my explanations. So another reason I didn't film it in the first place is because I've actually been really busy uh, with just regular work. I haven't been able to edit videos. In fact, the video you're watching now has mostly been uh, recorded about two months ago. Yeah, it's, uh, it's that long. Well, most of the shell is actually apart. Now I can continue to crack it open, actually uh, show that it is still working. Don't think I did that at the start of the video. So here we go. It is uh, starting to open up uh, only on the top though, because the bottom still has these clips. Do I need to separate? There we go. Just using a little screwdriver bit for that. And now, excuse me. The two shell halves come apart and we can actually look at the pack itself. Now as an overview, uh, what you can mainly see is that I just straight up reselled the entire battery. There are uh, 40 cells, uh, 10 in a row, and they are kind of like very closely packed. This is the uh, most compact way to pack uh, cylinders in general. In this pack, uh, there is obviously the cells. Then there is this uh, ribbon. 
It doesn't actually just run on the top, it folds back and runs on the bottom and then slots or uh, sits in an FFC connector on the BMS board. So this board that actually shows how full the battery is. And then on the other side, uh, there's the main connector uh, connected to the battery pack with uh, these pretty thick uh, wires that actually run all the way over the battery pack and uh, on the other side as well. That like there's so Bosch. <laughs> I know this is your first attempt at a. Uh, this is uh, the same battery that they used for the very first generation of Bosch uh, mid motor e bikes. Uh, like it's kind of obvious that if you have to put the cables that carry all the current on both sides of the pack, like they are uh, attached to the cells on the bottom of these two cells, run all the way to the BMS, and then from the BMS battery management system, they run all the way back again to this connector. Like how obvious would it be to put the BMS at this end? And just reduce all the losses through these wires and just the wires in general like this now zooming in on the cells themselves you can see that the uh, the cells are tab welded and they are obviously welded together four at a time and then welded to the next uh, batch of four so each of these tabs connect to eight cells at a time now what i did is uh, you can here see the result of the reselling, not the actual original. The original uh, was a lot cleaner, obviously. What I did is I actually took a chisel to the original uh, batteries. Sounds dangerous, but it's actually the easiest and fastest way to um, remove these battery tabs from the battery cells. I mean, that alone would have been a good video, right? So I removed the tabs wholesale uh, as well as I could. Obviously they have been damaged a little bit and bent. I got all the tabs off pretty cleanly uh, in their original shape. Uh, none of them straight up broke or snapped. Uh, so I could reuse them and use my tab welder to um, attach them to the new cells. Now all these cells, they sit in this plastic holder which is actually really well designed. Uh, it's on both sides and they, uh, like there's one on this, on the negative end, uh, end of the cells and there's another plastic holder on the other side on the positive end and like on the side of the pack they kind of clip together to make this protective sleeve almost uh, around the cells that protects them pretty well from shock. It also separates them, uh, like if the cells get warm uh, they have plenty of breathing space to uh, release their heat so it's pretty well designed much better than uh, just the the paper tape type uh, separation and uh, cell construction so now something else Bosch did that I wasn't that happy with is uh, this here so these this uh, orange bit that's a uh, flexible circuit and they kind of just use that to tap off the individual battery voltages to monitor the individual cells if they don't uh, get over voltage or uh, over discharge or anything like that and um, what they did is they just had like bare copper here and spot welded it to the tabs now I cannot do that uh, and also that's just not a good way of connecting these things yet you should use solder connections on uh, on copper anyway technical issues aside I uh, had to rip those off. So this here, uh, this has just been ripped off the original cell and then I put on a little, tiny little wire uh, from here to the actual tab itself and uh, covered it with some hot glue to make sure everything uh, sat in place. And th this works fine. Did that uh, everywhere pretty much. You can uh, see here, like it, it runs from the wire to, uh, to the tab. Now here's the BMS or battery management system and I really lucked out on this one. Uh, on a couple of forum posts on a uh, Pedelec forum uh, I found that uh, this battery pack does not have like the suicide function where if you remove uh, the voltage from uh, from the BMS that it just shuts down and will never start up again. You can just completely remove this and um, resell the battery and then connect everything in sequence. 
and uh, it was absolutely fine. Modern battery packs, modern BMSs often have, you know, people call it like a suicide chip, but it's not really like that. Uh, it's um, uh, one chip that has a volatile RAM uh, that stores some, some values or something. And if you remove power, then obviously that, uh, that RAM r loses its data and uh, the battery pack pretty much becomes unusable. And this is one of the main reasons why, uh, for instance, laptop battery packs die. Uh, they don't necessarily die because the cells die. They die because that circuit somehow wipes itself. Or in some cases, uh, like one of the cells in the battery dies and uh, removes voltage from that chip and you know this battery pack controller it's uh what you would expect from bosch honestly uh really good very heavy copper they used looks like normal copper but this is like 105 microns so about three times the normal thickness uh, here's a, um, uh, a current sense uh, resistor uh, so they obviously do do current sensing some, some kind of overcurrent protection. It is low side, this is a negative terminal. Uh, there is an ST microcontroller that does all the functions. Then here is one P MOSFET and there's another one. So there are anti-series um, anti P MOSFETs that will actually turn on the power to the rest of the bike if you push the button. Uh, there's a 40 amp soldered down fuse. So if the pack ever really gets a, a gross fault, then uh, this will definitely blow. There's a little um, uh, power management for the board itself. Uh, it does have a step down converter from the total battery voltage. so It will not drain just one of the cells, it will drain the entire pack uh, for its own power consumption. Also this uh, on circuit, uh, I try to measure the pack, the, the BMS power consumption and if it's off, it really seems to be completely off. It only draws like a microamp or something, uh, something I cannot accurately measure. So, uh, yeah, uh, really well designed. That's all I can really say. And as far as performance that I actually get out of it goes, I have now for the first time fully drained this pack, and that turned out to be a chore, kind of. Uh, the previous pack, I could uh, go from my hometown of Berkon Rodreis to a neighboring town, Beinocker, and back. And it would be pretty much empty. It would have like two out of five bars, uh, which means it can go flat pretty much any time. That's about 18 kilometers. Uh, on the very first trip that I did with the bike, I went from Leiden to Berkon Rodreis, which is about 24 kilometers. And it was completely flat when I arrived. It was like exactly what I could do. So I could get about 24 kilometers out of it. Uh, on this pack, I uh, did the pretty much the exact same thing, uh, only twice. So I went to Pijnakrambeck and then again. And then I biked to Leiden and back. And it uh, still wasn't drained. It still had two bars. So... I can definitely get much more than twice the range out of this now. Uh, by the way, that was at the highest uh, support level. It's called the speed mode on this uh, Bosch motor. So uh, obviously the original pack wasn't 288 watt hours anymore. This pack now contains Samsung INR 18650 35Es. Those are 3500 milliamp hour, uh, about 12.8 watt hour per cell. And the original ones were Samsung uh, NCR 18650 22Es, 2200 milliamp hours, roughly seven and a half watt hour a piece. Uh, so I should have gained only about 40% range and I got three times as much. So the old cells were definitely going, going bad. They were really at the end of their life. So that is probably why I went from about 24 kilometers range to well, about 75-ish. I am very sorry that I couldn't show you the actual rebuilding process. Uh, but it would have been kind of boring, and uh, you got the gist of it anyway. But it can be done. These batteries can be reselled, and you will get a uh, like, tremendous range out of it. Uh, more even than the modern Bosch battery packs. They clearly don't use these cells in the new like 400 watt-hour uh, frame packs. Anyway, 
Hope you enjoyed the video, even though it was kind of meh. And uh, see you next time.